On today's show, NHTSA investigates the first fatal crash involving a car in self-driving mode, a rundown of the new limited edition Viper models, and why designers don't want clay models to disappear. All that and more coming right up on AutoLine Daily. This is AutoLine Daily for the 1st of July of 2016. The National Highway Traffic Safety Administration is investigating the first fatal accident involving a car driving autonomously. A Tesla Model S in autopilot mode struck the trailer of an 18-wheeler after it made a left turn in front of the car. Tesla says the system did not detect, quote, the white side of the tractor trailer against a brightly lit sky, so the brake was not applied. This is reigniting the debate over whether the technology is ready for real-world driving. It's not perfect, but it does have the potential to drastically reduce the number of accidents. Automakers and tech companies have tested self-driving cars for millions of miles with a limited number of incidents. So while this is an extremely unfortunate situation, autonomy is still worth pursuing. Renault may be Europe's number one light commercial vehicle brand, But it's certainly not known for pickup trucks. Well, that's all about to change as it just introduced its first body on frame, one ton, or what we would call here in the US, a mid-sized truck called the Alaskan. But for you eagle eye viewers out there, you'll notice it's a rebadge of Nissan's Navara pickup. The Alaskan does get its own unique styling and has the option of one gasoline or two diesel engines, depending on the market. A six-speed manual or seven-speed automatic transmission is available, plus two or four-wheel drive. The Renault Alaskan will make its debut in the strongest pickup markets in Latin America. And still to come, a look at five special edition Viper models. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone Tires, your journey, our passion. Dow Automotive Systems, advanced materials that deliver better results and by Lear, a global leader in automotive seating and electrical systems. It was only a week ago that FCA announced its ending production of the Viper in 2017. But to send the car off with a bang, Dodge created five special limited edition models. Orders for the car started on June 24th, and within two days, every single one was sold out. At a recent event at FCA's Chelsea Proving Grounds in Michigan, Ryan Kim, Viper's brand manager ran me through what makes these models so special. This year for 2017, we're celebrating our 25th anniversary and we're doing that in a very special way. We have four limited edition models right behind me. And starting from the closest one, we have the Snakeskin Edition. What's so special about the Snakeskin Edition has a very unique uh, SRT stripe that has the snakeskin design on them. It actually looks like a snakeskin and uh, it has advanced aerodynamics package as well as the matte, uh, Sidewinder matte wheels. Um, Every one of these additions, special additions behind me have a serialized, customizable uh, uh, instrument panel badge that says either snakeskin edition or whatever the edition may be. Behind that, we have the GTSR uh, commemorative edition. It is uh, a throwback and I would say it's probably the, one of the most iconic Viper liveries of all time, the white with the blue GTS stripes. And back in 1998, we produced 100 of the GTSR, and uh, with that, it, it came with the exact same paint scheme, uh, a red striker front badge on the fascia, and uh, USA flags on the B-pillars, which you see on this example here today. Behind that, we have the Viper uh, 128 edition. It is the ACR Extreme, and as you know, uh, we have 13 production car track records, and one of those tracks was Laguna Seca. At Laguna Seca, we got a lap time of 1 minute and 28 seconds, and we're celebrating that with the 128 edition. Uh, we will be building up to 28 of those, and what's unique on that car, it has the ACR uh, center and driver stripe in red with a black body, and it's a painted wing with red inner and outer wing end plates. So it looks exactly like our 133 edition back in 2010 when we broke the Laguna Seca track records then as well. 
And the far behind the fourth car is the 2017 Voodoo 2 edition. We'll be producing up to 31 uh, of those. And it has a graphite metallic driver ACR stripe with red tracer stripes. Now you might be wondering where that fifth model is. Well, it's actually a dealer edition that was only available to Dodge's two biggest Viper dealers. But have no fear, due to popular demand, Dodge is going to produce a snakeskin ACR edition. But act fast, up to a total of 31 will be made. Coming up next, why designers say clay models are still essential to creating great looking cars. Lear Connexus is the new application suite in vehicle connectivity designed to deliver over-the-air software updates and more from Lear Corporation's eSystems, leaders in power and data management. There's more car news and industry insight from the AutoLine Network every day. Take a moment to click that subscribe button. You'll never miss another AutoLine episode. Back in the day, automakers used clay models to create a new vehicle. But over the last couple of decades, companies are using computers more and more. And some car makers are even talking about ditching clay altogether. But not all designers are on board with that. On AutoLine this week, John talks with three of the top designers at GM, including Global Design Chief Ed Welburn. And they share why design should not go completely digital. You need to see it in size, proportion, the interiors you need to be able to sit in them. So I, I can't imagine that we would ever. You use imagine. the digital side, of course, to do other things and with the releases, but you've got to. And also you've got to make mistakes. You know, you've got to try things out. And luckily with clay, if it was wood, you'd have to take a lot long time to repair it or be ready for a presentation. Mm -hmm. With clay, if, we, if we're doing something, if Ed comes in and doesn't like it, Luckily, we can change it within a day, okay? It's and called we can... getting out the big exactly. rink. Exactly. <laughs> those guys are so talented. They save our life daily, okay? And, you know, the, the use of the computer and developing the uh, design in the tube, as we call it, is become a lot more prevalent. We use it a lot. Yeah. But the final design, being able to walk around yeah. the vehicle to capture the emotion, that whole passion that's in the design. And, I, and I've got to believe too, actually touching it, physically yeah, yeah, touching yeah, it, yeah, running your hand yeah. down it has got to help you in, in perceiving what you're, you're and, doing. And, and even if we could do it on the computer, it's a lot easier communicating with the leaders of the company Show them it. when you have a three-dimensional object yeah. that you can walk around with yeah. them. Yeah, with the portfolios of our, our business get expanding in different configurations yeah. in vehicles, it's important to have these side-by-side -side reviews outside because yeah. size, proportion, yeah. height, yeah. mass, volume, yeah. wheel size, you, you can't do that in a conference room. And it has to be outside. Yeah, and sometimes some of the surfaces on the, on the computer, will, you'll, they'll look good. So then we mill them onto the, machine, onto the model, and then Ed will come by our wheelbarrow, and you see the detail, the fine detail, you would not see on the screen. Yeah. You really... you. You, many a time you'll walk by and you'll make a comment and you, we'll see it and you know we've got to put it right. In general, it's people outside of design that want to get rid of clay. The design teams want to stay yeah. with it. For more insight into GM design, you can watch that entire discussion right now on Autoline.tv or you can find it on our YouTube channel. And a quick programming note here. The Autoline crew is on break next week for the 4th of July holiday so there won't be any new episodes of Daily. We'll be right back here on Monday, July 11th, so join us then for the latest news in the global automotive industry. But that wraps up this week's worth of episodes. Thank you for watching. Have a great weekend. Wards is the industry leader for news, data, and analysis. That's why companies across the globe subscribe to our premium service, maybe even your own. Log in for subscriber access now. Check your company's intranet for details and rely on wardsauto.com to keep you informed.